Welcome back everyone. So in the last video I showed some some very basic uh, introduction tips to securing your Windows system. Um, so now I'm going to show you some introductory tips to securing a Linux system. And really, I mean, this is focused on um, like Linux desktop and Windows desktop. So um, the approaches are going to be pretty much the same really. Um, the risks are a little bit different, but um, really the approach to try to just make sure that we're running secure desktop systems are about the same. So the first thing I want to do, I'm, I'm running uh, actually an Ubuntu-based or a Debian-based uh, Linux distribution called Linux Mint. Um, so the first thing we gonna, we're going to do, just like in Windows, is make sure that our software is up to date. So that means using um, you know, one of the newest versions or, or the newest, I guess, supported version of Linux. Um, uh, if you have the capability to actually be running custom versions of Linux, then uh, you don't need this video anyway. But um, using the newest kind of supported version of Linux, um, which means updating, um, updating your operating system relatively often. Now, um, there's kind of the updating the core system, which is kind of like going from Windows, you know, seven to Windows eight to Windows 10. Um, Linux has kind of the same approach that you could also, you could also think of it like the same approach. So every year, for example, Ubuntu comes out with, um, a new, uh, can we say version? Um, so we kind of need to upgrade to the newer versions or uh, we should keep relatively up to date on those newer versions of the core system. But we also have to think about the packages that we install. So the software that we install on that core system and on an Ubuntu system uh, from command line, we can use the package manager called apt. So if I want to update my system, I can do sudo apt update. And what update will do is go out and one second, it will go out and uh, look at all of these um, uh, repositories and get the newest versions of packages that are available. So it will compare the packages installed on my system, the software installed on my system with what's available in uh, these different repositories. And then um, it says everything's up to date, so I don't need to update, but I can do sudo apt upgrade and then it will go out and download all of the new packages if there's any available um, and then install them. So um, using this method, I can keep my system up to date with, with the latest software. That way I'm never, let's say, too far behind. Now, there are other ways to install software other than the package manager. And that is, for example, from um, uh, source. So I usually keep... Um, I don't know if it's just me, but I usually keep source code inside the opt folder. So everything I put in the opt folder, I know um, is coming usually from some sort of other repository, and I need to update that manually because it's not uh, managed by the package manager. So if I was on a CentOS system or kind of a Red Hat based system, then the package manager that that uses is called yum. So instead of doing apt, I would use something called sudo yum and then probably dash y um, and then update or upgrade. And I believe update and upgrade do the same thing. I'm not completely sure, but I'm, I, I think update and upgrade using yum package manager will go through and again, check all of the software that's installed that it knows about from the package manager. Um, check the current installed version with whatever is available um, in external repositories. And if anything is new, it will download them and install them automatically. So um, a lot of Linux systems have some type of package manager. Um, not all of them. Sometimes you still have to install stuff manually, but package managers are a good way. Um, there's also now a couple different ways to install things other than from source um, and package managers. Um, but uh, that's getting a little bit, a little bit, um, more complicated, so I'll just leave it at package managers for now. So just make sure that you keep a relatively up-to-date core system and then make sure that the packages or software that's installed in your system is up-to-date um, quite often. Like check, um, you can have it even check automatically daily, um, but I tend to update, you know, every day or every couple days or at least every week. 
So after making sure that our software is up to date, we want to uh, install some type of antivirus. And you might be thinking, well, Linux doesn't get viruses, right? So why should I install an antivirus? Well, that's not necessarily true. Linux and OS X and basically any operating system can get some type of virus. Um, the fact that it doesn't get viruses very often um, doesn't mean that it can't, right? So there's two ways to look at it. First off, um, from your own protection protection perspective, um, because it's possible to to get some type of virus or rootkit, um, we should be looking out for it just to protect ourselves. But also, um, imagine that a, a Windows virus got downloaded to our computer and somehow it accidentally got passed to one of our friends who's actually running a Windows system. Let's say that somebody uh, emails us with a virus and we forward that email. Well, if you're not scanning for viruses, then you'll forward that email and your friend might get infected. So uh, scanning for viruses not only protects you, but it also protects, you know, people you're communicating with. So um, my virus is my antivirus is set up to scan uh, incoming email, for example. Um, so think of it a couple different ways. So to install or an antivirus that we can run in Linux, um, there are a couple, but basically I think the most common is Clam. AV, clam AV, and from uh, GUI or from the actual uh, desktop, you can run clam TK. And clam TK is a very basic, um, not great interface for clam AV, but really the only thing I ever use clam TK for is um, the scheduler. So if you open up scheduler, you can set the time that you want to update definitions and scan. Um, uh, scan your computer every day. You can also set up what you scan on your computer every day. Um, you, of course, can use it to update manually, but you never really need to do that. It'll, it should update automatically. And you can also set it to scan a file, scan a directory, and do basic analysis, okay, and check your quarantine. So there are a couple different things you can do with Clam TK. Um, it's just a front end for Clam AV. If you want to run Clam AV from the, the um, command line, you definitely can. And to keep uh, Clam AV up to date on command line, then you would use a tool called Fresh Clam. Fresh Clam. Okay, so that is an ant, uh, that's one antivirus, um, that will look for a couple different type, well, several types of, uh, Windows viruses as well as Linux, um, Linux, Linux viruses? Yeah, Linux viruses. Uh, the next thing that you probably want to install is something called RK Hunter, and that is Hunter, and that is Rootkit Hunter. So if I do, for example, sudo, uh, RK Hunter, uh, dash dash, um, scan, scan, uh, check, check. Yeah. If I do sudo RK Hunter check, then it will go through and check if my system is infected with a, a rootkit by looking at different traces that are usually left behind um, by rootkits. Now it will give you some warnings on, on different executables depending on what those executables can do. Um, and it has quite a few checks. Uh, you can automate this and have it email you if something's going on. Um, but um, I usually just run it every so often uh, just to make sure. Um, so with Clam AV and Rootkit Hunter, you know you might not catch you know the newest the newest types of things, but you will catch a lot of things. Um, uh, and it's just interesting to know you know what what's going on in your system and if, if something in your system has changed anyway. And that's basically what Rootkit Hunter will tell you. So Rootkit Hunter is can I say almost kind of like a, a very basic type of intrusion detection system as well as scanning for traces of um, uh, known rootkits. So if you have both of those, um, you're pretty well off, I guess, for, for at least scanning for malware on your system. Okay. So um, now we're, we've, we've updated our software. Our software and the core, the core system is relatively up to date. The software that's installed on our system is up to date. And uh, we have an antivirus or some way to check if malware is on our system. Okay, well, what we might want to do next is um, uh, firewall. So configuring a firewall and um, most Linux systems come with a firewall built in. A lot of them use IP tables by default, IP tables. Um, I usually install um, the uncomplicated firewall or UFW because writing rules for UFW is very, very easy. And IP tables I find um, 
not 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 impossible, but also not very easy. Um, and uh, firewall. Um, this is called G UFW. It's a GUI interface for UFW, and it's also very simple to configure. Um, so you can install G UFW in I think most systems. Um, and by default, the firewall is off. I think or at least for Linux Mint. Um, so if you turn it on, um, by default, the incoming is denied. So now anything that's trying to get into my system that's not initiated by my computer um, is denied and outgoing is allowed. So what I would do next is go in and write rules for different programs that I want to be able to connect in and out. And then I would probably disallow or deny um, uh, uh, outgoing as well if I really want to lock the system down. Um, right now, I'm not going to do that, but at least have some sort of basic firewall on. Even if you just install this, turn it on and, sorry, turn it on and then have in, oh no, and then have incoming set to deny, you're already much better off than you were. Uh, right. So setting up a firewall, you can use, um, IP tables. And there's lots of instructions online about how to use IP tables. You can also use UFW, the uncomplicated firewall. This is the one that I usually use because it's just easy. Um, or GUFW. Okay. And then finally, uh, some sort of backup solution. So most Linux systems also have a backup tool or backup utility. Um, so if you open it up, just like Windows backup utility, basically you can back up, you can restore files. Um, in this case, for Ubuntu, you can back up the software selection. So all of the software you've had installed from the package manager, not including from source, you can back up that list and then restore the software later. So if you're refreshing a system, um, you can just restore and get basically all of the programs that you had installed before. So it's very handy. Backup files is obviously for your personal files. Um, instead of using the backup tool, I use um, Crash Plan. Uh, yeah, Crash Plan for my backup solution because it works on a lot of different systems and I can kind of centralize and, and encrypt with my own keys and that's important. Um, right, so that's it basically for um, trying to secure a Linux system. Thank you very much.